Welcome. We are so glad that you're here today at Christ Church. My name is Christina Malone. I'm the director of worship. And we are so blessed to have the ladies of Lee with us this morning under the direction of Dr. Randy Sheeks and his wife, Debbie. And you may not know this, but a hundred years ago, <laughs> I went to Lee University and I was a part of this choir. So it is such an awesome thing to have them here today leading us in worship. And we've been blessed already this morning in the rehearsal time. And my daughter was even a part of the choir last year. So um, they feel like family. And um, we're just glad we just want you to worship along with them this morning and uh, make them feel welcome. And now we're going to check out some things happening this week at Christ Church.
I'm David Hall, one of the pastors here at Christ Church, and I think you realize already how blessed we are today. Would you bow with me in prayer? Almighty God, you are the source of all that is good in this life. You created us in your image, and so help us to turn to you for direction and for guidance. Help us to have wisdom and understanding that we might know you more fully, but also give us open and generous hearts that we might receive your love as grace and serve others. We ask that you come into this place now. Bless us with your holy presence. Our worship is directed to you. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Can I have you guys stand as we worship? Second Corinthians says that we are in Christ Jesus and there's that we were in old, uh, but look, the new has come. And that gives me so much hope because we like to tell God who we think we are, but he has a new definition, a new identity for us, and that's in him. And that's what the song is about. So as we pray and as we worship, um, open up your hearts to gladness and thankfulness for all that he's done because it's amazing. And these verses start out with, who am I? Who am I that the highest king would welcome? I was lost, but he brought me in all his love for me. Oh, his love for me. Who the sun sets free.
voices and praise Him. You give life, you are love, you bring light to the darkness, you give hope, you restore. Olivia McKeon. I serve as one of the worship leaders here at Christ Church. And today our scripture reading comes from the book of Philippians chapter 4. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, 
will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. At this time, excuse me, at this time, we are going to um, continue in our worship through the giving of our tithes and our offerings. And if you'll also look at the end of your rows, there are red attendance pads. We'd love to know that you're here. And um, let's continue in our worship this morning. Your glory lights the stars and rising sun. Your power raises mountains like the dawn. How could I not worship? How could I not worship? You knew my name before my life began. My very days were carved by your own hand How could I not worship? How could I not worship?
Would you bow again with me in prayer? What a joy it is, Almighty God, to be in your house today, worshiping you. Thank you for the gifts of voice and music these young persons have given us this day. Actually, they've given to you. We thank you for their commitment that they work so hard to come to places like this amidst full-time uh, academics and study as students. Thank you that they're here with us today. Thank you for a wonderful week that we've enjoyed here at Christ Church, a week of small groups and study, a week of fellowship, a week of serving in our community. Thank you for the beautiful weather that so blessed our fall carnival. Thank you for each person and each family who heard our invitations and came and joined us. Help us always to be the kind of church that reaches out to others around us, helps them to understand and to know you, and that equips all of us to be your disciples. It's with sad hearts this morning that we lift a request to you that you be with families, 11 families who lost loved ones in Pittsburgh. As persons gathered around to study and to fellowship and to worship as they know how in a Jewish synagogue and were gunned down. We ask that you bring healing to those who were injured, bring comfort to those families, even more bring healing to our nation. Help us to move past this time of violence that is happening so many times. Today, many of us have come with prayers for healing. We ask that you answer those prayers. Some have come today having lost loved ones, and we ask that you bring consolation and care. All of us come today seeking your wisdom and your guidance and decisions we make in our lives. We thank you for the sermons of hope and encouragement that we have heard in this beautiful series around fear. And now today we ask that you bless Pastor Nathan in a special way as he comes to preach your word. Help us to hear it as your congregation and as your church. All these things we lift up in the name of your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. So we're in that annual time of the year when companies that focus on costumes and candy make a lot of money, all right? And parents and other caregivers of children get to deal with and adjust to the sugar and chocolate intake of those children for the next several days, weeks. And yet I also think about adults who will be dealing with other adults and their sugar and chocolate intake over the next several weeks. We did have a great time this past Wednesday with our fall carnival here at Christ Church. Around maybe more than 1,500 people were here for that event, and we rejoiced at those times. You'll see some pictures of uh, some of the people that were in costumes, including the children. I think we focused here on the children. We were, well, we were scared to put those of the adults up in their costumes, but um, we had a great time with that, and uh, that the last picture that you'll see is of the Southern Adventist University gym masters. They were kind of the closing show for us here on this uh, stage that night. And they're very good at what they do. They were flying through the air, and, and uh, they had all of us saying, wow, many times. But it wasn't just what I saw with my eyes that caused me to say, wow. My ears also perked up when their coach, as they began, it was something he said as they began. He said, he was talking about the courage it takes for them to do some of the things that they do. That, that as they go flying through the air and they expect others to catch them or to hold them up in the air, very high in the air, sometimes two and three high, it takes a lot of courage to do that. And then he made this statement. He said, one of the primary things that prevent us in life from growing is fear. And I thought, hey, I might want to use that on Sunday. In fact, somebody asked me later, did you say something to him about our series? And I said, no, but I'll want to use that on Sunday. So I invite you to write that one down or put that on your smartphone or, uh, you know, tape it to your refrigerator. Take that with you. One of the primary things in life that prevent us from growing is fear. 
So, Halloween is one of those times that we have fun with our fears. Now, let me quickly add that I have to, I have to express a concern about our culture and the, the fascination that our culture seems to have with movies about fear. I mean, it, it, it seems like they, they come almost every week, let alone this time of year. Um, and yes, we can have some fun with that, but I also am concerned that maybe we pay a price in the lives of children and teenagers and adults that's much more than the price of a ticket to a movie. Um, you know, it, it seems like we just can't get enough of Michael Myers and, and large sharks and dinosaurs and other creatures that scare us. But that's not the main thing that I'm concerned about related to fear right now. In this season, my primary concern related to fear is that you and I may let fear guide us at the voting booth next week. You know, fear really is a major weapon of the kingdom of evil, not the kingdom of Christ. And so I would encourage, I pray that every person that claims the name of Christ, who calls themselves Christian, will enter that voting booth not in a spirit of fear, not guided by a spirit of fear, but by the Holy Spirit. Maybe another way to say that is, is rather than the party line, uh, check out God's line. <laughs> uh, connect with God's line as you go to vote. Well, that leads me to a uh, a question that I brought up in the first sermon of this series. Three weeks ago, I was reminding us that the first time in the Bible that fear shows up is at the very beginning. It's when Adam and Eve are in the garden and they've disobeyed God and they go and hide because they're afraid. And I asked the question that day, should we fear God? And I said we'd come back to it. Well, it seems to me this is the week, this is the time, this is the day to address that question. We're, we're focused today on release it, release our fears to God. Well, if we're going to do that, should we fear God? There are several places in the Bible that says we should. Proverbs 1, 7 says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. And later in Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 through 7, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not rely on your own understanding. In all your ways submit to him, and he will make your paths straight. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and turn away from evil. Psalm 128, verse 1, Blessed are all who fear the Lord, who walk in his ways. In Leviticus chapter 19, some very practical everyday life rules are being given by God to the children of Israel. Beginning at verse 13 there, do not defraud or rob your neighbor. Do not hold back the wages of a hired worker overnight. Do not curse the deaf or put a stumbling block in front of the blind, but fear your God. And later in that chapter in verse 32, stand up in the presence of the aged, show respect for the elderly, and revere your God. Other translations would translate that word as fear. Fear your God. And by the way, those verses are another example of how the Bible so often connects our relationship with God with our relationship with people. And then right after the Ten Commandments are given in Exodus 20, we read this. When the people saw the thunder and lightning and heard the trumpet and saw the mountain and smoke, they trembled in fear. They stayed at a distance and said to Moses, speak to us yourself and we will listen, but do not have God speak to us or we will die. Moses said to the people, do not be afraid. God has come to test you so that the fear of God will be with you to keep you from sinning. So Moses speaks of an expectation that we should have a fear of God, but also says to these people who are afraid of God, do not be afraid. <laughs> Which is it? Well, in the Bible, the Hebrew word that's translated fear, most often translated fear, 
includes both a fear of punishment or discipline as well as a deep sense of reverence, respect, and awe. A good parent instills in their children both understandings of fear. I know very early in my life, I learned some fear of my parents because of the punishment and discipline I knew was coming if I did wrong. But I also learned a deep respect for them. I knew they loved me and were doing all they could to guide me in the right way to live my life, how to do right by others, especially my sister. So any fear I had of them early in my life grew into more and more a love for them. And I'm reminded there of the verse in 1 John chapter 4 which says, Perfect love casts out fear. Jesus showed us how to respect and have reverence for this heavenly parent he called Father, while at the same time not being afraid of God. He said we could have an intimate relationship with God, so much so that we could call him Abba, much like a toddler would say Dada or Papa. I don't know about you, but I can't have an intimate relationship with somebody I'm scared of. But I can have a close relationship with somebody I highly respect. Throughout the Bible, whenever a representative of God shows up to humans and humans cower in fear, what is that representative? Whether it's an angel or whatever or whoever, what do they always say? Fear not. Do not be afraid. Should we fear God? Well, yes, in the sense of a deep respect and reverence and awe, knowing that both the Old and New Testaments say the Lord disciplines those he loves. Should we fear God? No. In the sense that we don't have to be afraid of the one who loves us with a love beyond our understanding. One of the primary ways God spoke to me about sharing this sermon series was through a book by Adam Hamilton. He's the pastor at the Church of the Resurrection in Kansas City. And this book, he's probably written 25 books in the last 20 years. This book is titled, Unafraid, Living with Courage and Hope in Uncertain Times. I highly recommend it to you. In it, he uses an acronym with the word fear in this way. Face your fears with faith. Examine your assumptions in light of the facts. Attack your anxieties with action and release your cares to God. I've simplified that for this series to simply say, face it, examine it, attack it, release it. And today we're focused on release it. Release your fear and give it to God. To be specific, I'm talking about any anxiety or worry or fear that prevents you from living life fully and freely. Any anxiety or worry or fear that you have that prevents you from doing the things that the Holy Spirit leads you to do. For instance, if if you have an opportunity to lead somebody into a relationship with Jesus Christ and you have some fear that blocks you from doing that, then by all means it's vital that you allow God to overcome that fear in you so that you can be about that primary mission of our Lord. Uh, if, if 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 you see injustice that's happening to an individual or to a family or to whole groups of people around you, If you see that, if if something tugs in you and you say that's not right and you know that something needs to be said or something needs to be done and yet you have a fear, a worry, an anxiety about you that prevents you from speaking up or speaking out or, or doing something about it, then by all means it's those kinds of worries and fears that we're called to overcome, that we're called to give to God so that we can be about the mission of our Lord anytime, anywhere, no matter what. One of the online devotional scriptures we had this week was Psalm 56. The heading of that psalm in some Bibles says that it was written by David when he was being pursued by the Philistines. This was after he had defeated Goliath. We looked at that story last week. And David showed great courage in that event. And yet later, 
the Philistines are still chasing him, and he's scared. So he writes in this psalm, When I am afraid, I put my trust in you. In God whose word I praise, in God I trust and am not afraid. So he admits to being afraid, but also to giving that to God so that he's not afraid. Well, again, how can you do both? Last week, we, we ended our, one of our worship services by singing the chorus of Because He Lives. And that chorus includes, Because He Lives, All Fear Is Gone. Well, I was standing here singing that, and it all of a sudden hit me. Now, wait a minute. All fear isn't gone. I, I, we still get scared. We, we're still afraid at times. And I thought, you know, I, I, Bill and Gloria Gaither wrote that song. And I'm guessing if you could talk to them, they would say, it, it's not so much about all fear being gone totally, It's about because Jesus lives, because of what God showed, the power that God showed in what he did in Jesus at Easter, that when we're afraid, we can overcome that fear. That the power of fear to control our lives is gone as we give it to God. Yes, we're still scared. David was still scared even after he'd beat that giant. But he knew where to go to to overcome the fear. I often pray in my prayers, Lord, we give this to you. And it may be that I'm, I'm praying about something in my own life. I'm, I'm going through something and I'm, I'm searching for um, what to do, how to overcome some particular fear or anxiety or what to do in a particular situation. And I realize there's some things I can do, but there's also some things that only God can do. There's some things that only God controls and guides and can work through. And so I pray, God, I give it to you. And sometimes I'm talking with a a friend or a family member. I'm talking with um, somebody in the church or counseling with somebody in the community, and they're sharing with me about difficulties they're going through, struggles that they're having, fears that they're trying to overcome. And we'll talk about some options. Well, what what might you do to to deal with this? Here's some ways you could look at that. Here's some actions you could take, but we also acknowledge I also try to lift up and say, and certainly when I pray with them, I pray, Lord, everything we've talked about today, we give to you. Help us to know what you want us to do, but help us also to acknowledge that there's some things only you can do, and help us give that to you. In Matthew chapter 6, Jesus tells us, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, Or your body, about what you'll wear? Is life not more than food and clothes? So don't worry about those kinds of things. God knows you need them. But seek after the ways of God. Focus on doing the right thing and treating people the right way. And all these other things you need, God will provide. Well, that was also one of our devotional scriptures for online devotions this week. And Ben Matherly is one of our devotional writers And as he wrote about that passage, he compared what he called worry warts and prayer warriors. He said, worry warts are always worrying about anything and everything. They're always expecting and looking for the next bad thing that's going to happen. And yes, they can always find something to confirm what they were looking for. Prayer warriors, on the other hand, are always trusting God and looking for the next good thing that's going to happen in their life and thankful for the blessings of God in their life. Ben simply asked this question, are you a worry wart or a prayer warrior? Well, I think he he really hits the nail on the head there. I think he really gets at a key comparison, a key choice that all of us have in our lives. In some sense, it really comes down to this. You either live your life in fear or you live your life in faith. You're either scared and worried and anxious and hold on to that and live life based in that, or you acknowledge that, yes, there's some of that that comes along for all of us, But I'm not going to live in that. I'm not going to be controlled by that. I'm going to trust in God 
It's either fear or it's faith. Earlier we heard this passage read from the letter to the Philippians. It's one of those key Bible texts which we can all aspire to live by. But really, can we get to a point where we're not anxious about anything? Well, I, I think it goes back to what we've already said in general about fear. There are always going to be things in our life about which we have some level of concern, anxiety, worry, or fear. The issue is whether we're going to let that control us. Are you going to live in a constant state of anxiety or fear, or are you going to release it to God? This passage makes it clear that if we give everything to God in prayer, everything, you remember the song, the old, the old hymn says, Oh, what peace we often forfeit, all because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. When we do that, we can know a peace. This passage says we can know a peace which goes beyond our reason, goes beyond our understanding. We have a hard time of explaining why we can have such peace in the midst of our anxieties and worries and fears. It passes understanding. In fact, I was thinking about this morning, it's almost like you could put it on a scale. I should, have, I should have written this up and put it on the screen. More prayer equals less anxiety and fear equals more peace. But the opposite is also true. Less prayer equals more anxiety and worry equals less peace. And by the way, may I suggest to you that this prayer conversation with God, that I invite you to always have an open line, let it be an ongoing conversation all the time. Yes, there are times when we focus in prayer, but let the line always be open and the conversation always happening. But that that prayer conversation is more than just our private time with God. It's more than just a private conversation. Yes, we need that, but it's more than that. It also happens in our conversations with other people. Because I don't know about you, but I've had God speak to me through other people. I believe God speaks to us through others. So releasing your worries, your anxieties, and your fears to God includes sharing them with other people. So that God can speak through them to you. In some cases, that could even be a professional counselor or psychiatrist. There are some that in some cases that is what is most needed. It could be for you a family member or a friend. It always includes for those who are Christians, other Christians. We all need that Christian community. We need those others among us uh, that we fellowship with, that we, that we share with, those relationships that we know we can share those anxieties and fears and concerns. That's why it's so important. We're not going to grow to any real depth in our spiritual life if we're trying to do that on our own. We need each other. And God shares to us through others. Yes, God speaks to us sometimes, often, in our quiet time with the Lord. But God also speaks through other people with whom we share. So, I pray that you will face whatever worries, anxieties, fears that you have, that, that you'll face them. I, I pray that you'll examine them and seek the truth about them. I, I pray that, that you'll find that time, you'll find that situation in which you know it's time to attack that fear. But most of all, I pray and I encourage you to at some point release it, give it to God. Yes, there are things that you and I can do to deal with that which scares us. There's things we can do ourselves. But there's also things that only God can do. So release it. Give it to God. Amen and amen. Let's pray. Gracious and holy God. God who has overcome anything this world offers. Thank you for an assurance that 
we don't have to live. Yes, there may be things about which we're scared. There are things that we are concerned about, we worry about, we may be fearful of. But we don't have to live in that. We don't have to be controlled by that because we really can give it to you. We can know that you have overcome, continue to overcome, will always overcome. Help us, remind us, challenge us because we want to be your servants. We want to serve your mission. We don't want to let anything prevent us from helping others come to know you, from fighting the injustices of the world. So help us know that we have a place, we have a God that we can go to that will overcome anything that blocks us, including our fears. Help us give it to you. In Jesus' name, amen.
So we invite you again this day to follow the way of Christ, to give your life, to choose this way of our Lord that is a way of overcoming fear, of overcoming all that would cause us to be anxious in life. Know that you are welcome, and certainly if you're looking for a church with which to unite in mission and ministry, we welcome you at Christ Church, and we invite you to come as we sing. Can we stand together and sing this hymn of our faith? Sing it with me. Great is thy faithfulness, O God, my Father. again say thank you to the ladies of Lee. Thank you for being here. We so appreciate 
the gift, the talent that God has given you and your willingness to share that to help other people worship and all the work that you put into that and being here with us today. So as we close this time of worship and we go out into the world to serve the mission of our Lord, would you receive this song of prayer and blessing as we go by the ladies of Lee?